Oh, hi everyone. Happy to welcome you back to a new season of the Carol Azam Show. Um, so this episode uh, is all about the Chinese New Year's celebration. As we all know, Chinese all around the world are celebrating their new, Happy New Year. And this year is the year of the ox. So I've invited Evan Forlong to join me for a little chat about it. Um, you know, Evan is um, originally from Taiwan, but she's been living in Ireland since 2009 with her family. Um, she's the principal of Dublin School of Mandarin Chinese and has been teaching Chinese language and culture courses since 2009. She has a master's in education from UCD and currently she studies fintech in TUD. And if you must know, uh, she's also one of the 101 women in my new book. So Evan, uh, happy having you with me today. So let's talk about the Chinese New Year. So what do you like most about celebrating the Chinese New Year? Yes, as a kid, I love it um, because it's spring holidays, there's no school and I get to wear new clothes as a tradition. I have to and I don't need to take shower on that day uh, because I'm not allowed to. Um, and most importantly, I get a few thousand richer overnight, you know, but not to like it. Um, but as an adult, um, it's my job to keep this uh, tradition uh, going, you know, pass on the cultural heritage. And I love doing that too. Um, that's why I have been uh, teaching Chinese uh, as a heritage language, as a second language. Uh, for the last 10 years and I love it. All right, I've had people, I've had some people call it the Chinese New Year. I've had some other people call it the Lunar Year. Is there a difference between these two or are the two the same thing? Yes, the short answer is they are the same. Others call it the Spring Festival. Um, as you, most people might know, you know, the ethnic Chinese, uh, migrants they are counted the world's largest immigrant um, population globally um, so the second and the third generation of these uh, migrant descendant some of them don't see themselves as chinese you know they see themselves as american canadian singaporean malaysian and etc um that's why they they don't always call it a Chinese New Year. They celebrate it as a, the Spring Festival or the Lunar New Year. Um, some people may know this, you know, the lunar calendar is 354 days a year. And the 1st of January is the first day of the new moon. So it's the new year. You know, during uh, events like this, people like to exchange gifts. I want to know, I'm just curious, you know, I just want to know if it is the same thing with the Chinese New Year. Do you exchange gifts? Yes, we do. Um, if my parents were alive now, I would have brought home some gifts, you know, typically food, um, gift boxes, uh, hampers of edible goods, you know. Um, I would also give them uh, red envelopes, red packs of, uh, like, with cash inside. Uh, children always get lucky money, you know, in the red envelopes uh, from families, relatives, you know, instead of gift uh, as Christmas here. Um, on the 2nd of lunar January, the tradition is that all married daughters would uh, visit their parents with gifts. And I remember um, I used to go to my granddad's with my parents and we always bought, bought like 15 or 20 of the same gifts to give it to my granddad's um, relatives and neighbors. So yeah, it's very much gift giving time of the year. At Christmas, you know, people use different kinds of decorations to make their houses look beautiful. Do the Chinese use particular types of decoration that are symbolic, you know, during the Chinese New Year? Can you describe some of the reasons why you use uh, particular decorations? Yeah, that is correct. We also uh, decorate the houses during the festival, during the spring festival. But what normally people would do is to do a good spring cleaning. 
beforehand, maybe two or three days before the festival. And then the typical decoration, well, if you have been to the Asia market in town, you probably notice, uh, I'm sure you see a lot of red um, decorations, you know, like red lanterns, red paper with uh, lucky and nice uh, calligraphy written on them, you know. Um, in my house, we, we have this uh, piece of red paper and it says spring and wealth and fortune like they are all written on different papers and then we put them on the windows and on the door um, as a decoration you know um other decoration are popular would be the um the chinese nuts I'm, I'm sure you probably have seen them you know like quite big and you could hang them anywhere and it's just lovely you know we love red we love the color of red so that's why i'm wearing red today well <laughs> You know, this is like um, traditional um, events. There are usually folklores around it. So I'm just curious. I want to know more <laughs> about the Chinese tradition. So I would like to know if you don't mind if you remember any kind of stories at all surrounding the Chinese New Year. Um, perhaps something that your parents used to tell you when you were smaller. You know, when you were growing up. Do you remember any short stories? Something that you can share with us. Okay, the story of the Chinese New Year, um, it involves a monster called Nian. Uh, Nian literally means year, okay? And apparently this monster uh, enjoy uh, sleep, right? So he slept all year round in the bottom of the sea. And he gets up on New Year's Eve usually, and obviously hungry. Uh, so he would eat whatever he came up, you know, came in front of him. So um, there's a village nearby where the monster usually comes out and everybody would pack uh, for like three days and then hide away in the mountains um, because they obviously they don't want to be eaten by Nian, this uh, monster. So um, there's one ear there was a old lady who didn't or couldn't uh, go with the rest of the villagers because um, her husband was quite ill so they, they wouldn't be faithful traveling and so she stayed behind with, with her husband and then come to that evening there was a guy who knock on, knocks on the door and then it turned out he was um sort of begging for food so the old lady uh sort of you know told him the story about the whole shiban and the monster and all that and asked him to uh go away basically but the old guy said yo i just give me some dumplings. I I sort it out. You know, I sort this master out. So, uh, she did. Um, she gave him some dumplings, and uh, and then the monster uh, obviously uh, turned up. And what the old guy did was he put up a lot of um, uh, bamboo, and he dressed himself red and put up lots of red decorations around the the. The house and then he turned on the light so when the monster approached and uh, obviously that is the only house sort of you know lit up and uh, so he went for it the monster didn't realize the old guy was expecting him so uh, as soon as the monster arrives and the firecrackers went off and the the the, the red kind of sting off the monster's eyes and all that so the monster ran away and the next day which is the Chinese New Year or the Lunar New Year and all the villagers came back and was really surprised you know their cattle are still alive and everything was just normal so um they asked the old lady you know what happened and then she told the story and it turns out that this old guy was uh, actually a uh, a uh, wizard so then it become the tradition then every um new year's eve that people would pull up the decorations and you know pull up the uh fireworks and firecrackers you know it's a good tradition 
take Xmas for example and we want to have the turkey, we want to have the pudding and so on and so forth. During this period, this during the season of the Chinese New Year celebrations, are there special foods eaten at this time? Tell us if they have symbolic meanings to it. So the typical food we eat uh, on the New Year's Day or the New Year's Eve, it depends on the families, uh, would be fish, uh, chicken, radish, uh, orange, pineapples, and rice cakes. Rice cakes plays a big part in these uh, festivals. They are savory um, rice cake, and then they are also sweet, okay? Um, so these food have the sounds that are associated with good meanings. And some of you might have known that they are only 405 sounds in the entire language that is Mandarin Chinese. So many things share the same sound, and they also share uh, the my, they might share the same tones, but they have different like words and meanings. Uh, reddish uh, it's for good luck as a hao cai tou, and rice cake nian gao means your business job and study will elevate year after year. And the vegetables are, you know, obvious reason longevity. You know, so eat your green kids, okay. Um, fish, yu, represent surpluses, so people are wishing to have surpluses, you know, year after year. Um, yeah, these are the food that we kind of always eat uh, during the, you know, the Lunar New Year. And we did have all of this food yesterday, actually. Can you tell us something that may be of... Um a superstitious nature maybe it's something that you're either not allowed to do or something that you must do during this period of your celebration i think all cultures have their superstitions um to name a few for the spring festival um people are discour discouraged to take medicines on the first day of the new year because the first day of the new year sort of represent the rest of the year um so people are generally looking for a good start of the year um for example like eating good food staying with the family and giving generously and etc so people want to kick off their year with a positive remark um other taboos such as like no cleaning and you know no cleaning the house and not taking showers um is to keep the good luck with them, you know, not sweeping away or wash away the good luck. Um, I would like to know in terms of this pandemic, has the celebration this year been any different from previous years, you know, due to, due to COVID-19? Um, yeah, it has been a very difficult year, 2020, no doubt. Um, but we did sneak in the usual celebration for um, early February last year. Uh, about 200 people over here. Um, but this year um, is the first year in my 21 years in Ireland that we couldn't have a physical um, party, you know, which is a shame. Um, but we had a hot pot at dinner, like an online party uh, on Friday. Um, but it's not the same, you know. Okay, lastly, you are one of you are one of the women that contributed to my new book. I want to take this opportunity to thank you once again. All right. Uh, so may I ask you why you were so interested to participate in a book about COVID nineteen lockdown? Okay. Um. Thank you for having me again. Um. You know, the last global pandemic was, you know, 1957, the Asian flu. And then the one before that was 1918, the Spanish flu. And so that's like 40 years apart. And I'm hoping like for the rest of my lifetime, there won't be another. Um, also other reasons like um, we have other crises, you know, like the financial crisis, um, climate change, um global recession you know unemployment etc and um, so when you invited me to contribute towards your new book and i thought that was a wonderful idea to create um sort of like time capsules 
of this pandemic. So thanks again for having me. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. I wish you the best of the day. It's uh, Valentine's Day as well, so I am sure that you have something nice planned for yourself and your loved ones. So I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your day, okay? Yeah. Going back to this interview, I want to say that there is something, something very interesting that I, I discovered from this small interview with Evan about the differences between cultures. That it is, you know, cultures are so close sometimes. If you look very well, there's just um, a very thin line. You know, Evan has just mentioned during the interview, you know, uh, some of the things that they consider to be a taboo. Things that they mustn't do, you know, on a new year. So imagine they believe that they must not clean during the new year. Whereas in my own uh, tradition, you know, my village in particular, um, we believe the exact opposite. You want to know? Um, I don't know if they still practice this, but right from when I was small up till the point that I left home, this is what we used to do in the village. You know, every New Year day, you will see all the women very early in the morning carrying either buckets, basins, trash can, or whatever, you know, with uh, some form of rubbish that they must have swept from any corner of their home, you know, and head into the river to go and pour it into the river. Why? Because we believe that, you know, by so doing, we are throwing away any bad luck from the last year. And we don't want that to be carried over into the new year. So this is something that they must do because they believe that by throwing the dirt, into the river, it goes with the flow. Any bad luck, any problems from the previous year be washed away, you know, with the flow of the river. And well, <laughs> all right. So thank you everyone. Thank you for, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this show and um, enjoy your Valentine's. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day and happy Chinese New Year to everyone celebrating. Okay, so take care now and bye.